Okay, we're going to take a look at a simple example here to help you establish the fundamental ways in which we solve these third law problems. I think by now you probably have recognized that most force problems are solved in the same basic way and, you know, at least setting up the problem. And it's the details that you just have to work out, which is context specific. So things like minus signs, what specific forces exist, you know, the angles associated with it. This problem, it's, it's only meant to show you in a very basic way how we put together um, our models or Newton's second law for solving uh, problems where we have two interacting objects, two or more interacting objects, because certainly Newton's third law is applicable to more than just two objects which are interacting. In this problem, um, we're going to assume that this is a frictionless surface. It's not stated here in my particular question, the way I've worded it, but it's going to be a frictionless surface. We just want this to be a very simple and straightforward kind of problem. And so the very first thing we have to do is we have to draw an FBD for each of our blocks, block A and block B. Um, so let's do that now. So we have block A and that block we ask ourselves what is touching the block. We have the ground is touching the block which exerts a normal force upwards and because we don't have any friction we don't have to worry about the friction force associated with the ground. Then we have a, a touch by some person or something which is going to cause this force right here and this block to accelerate to the right. So we're going to have the force F pointing to the right. Now we also have another touch which is due to block B. And so that's going to be pointing to the left because block B is pushing on A. Not pulling, but pushing. All right, so the force of B on A is in this direction. And then, of course, we have the non-contact force of gravity, which is pointing straight down, and that is for block A. Then our FBD for block B is going to be a normal force. And I'll just I, uh, uniquely identify those with A's and B's. And then we have the force of gravity pointing down. And then we have block A is touching block B. And block A is going to be pushing B to the right because B is going to be moving to the right. It's block A that's causing it. So here we have the force of block A on block B. Now when solving these problems, basically all we have to do is write Newton's second law for each object and when necessary, each dimension. The question we're, we're being asked is about acceleration and the acceleration is always going to point in the direction of the net force and because we only have one external force acting on our system, the acceleration has to be horizontal. So for the time being, until the problem indicates otherwise as we work through it, we're going to work only in the horizontal dimension. So let's take a look at uh, Newton's second law for block A. So for block A, we have F net A is equal to MA AA. And in, for F net, we're going to have the pushing force minus FBA is going to be equal to MA times AA. And at this point, we really can't go any further. We want to solve for the acceleration, but we just don't have enough information to do it. This pushing force would be a known quantity. The mass of block A is a known quantity. It's just going to be mass A. Uh, but this force of B on A is unknown. And that is going to create a problem. So how do we get the force of B on A? And since we're out of stuff that we can do with the hors or with uh, block A because it would be of no value to do anything with the vertical forces that implies that we're going to have to look at block B and for block B we're just going to write F net B 
is equal to MB times AB. And F net B in the horizontal dimension is just this, FAB. Okay, so now remember that Newton's third law says that the force of A on B is equal to minus the force of B on A. And so we do have a relationship between these two equations that we can exploit. So F net B becomes FAB is equal to MB times AB. And that relationship that we're going to exploit is right here. Okay? So I have a question for you. Do you substitute MB times AB, you know, MBAB, in for FBA? Or do we use the negative of MBAB? And I ask that question based on this relationship right here, Newton's third law. All right, now the substitution that you should make should just be this. Do not add any negative signs anywhere to this. And don't take away any negative signs for any reason. And I'll explain in a moment. Let me write this out first. So we get F minus MB times AB is equal to MA times AA. All right, now. Why do we not change this negative sign? Why don't we change that? Well, the reason we don't change that negative sign is because when we wrote this line right here, when we wrote that variable, we've already taken the direction into account. What we need to know is what is the magnitude? How large is that force? Because direction is already taken care of. So we just need to know how large is the force and that's the purpose of using block B block B gives us the magnitude so even if block B we had a negative value here the only thing we're interested in is the magnitude okay so let's finish solving this we're almost done so we get um, F is equal to MA times a a plus MB times AB. And so right now you might be asking, well, how do we get the acceleration? Now the one thing you shouldn't do is just assume that A and A are the same and that you can drop those subscripts. We never drop anything until we know for sure that we can do it. So in order to deal with and handle these accelerations here, which appear to be different, because in some problems they will be different, Make no mistake, all right? We have to find the acceleration constraint. So what is the acceleration constraint in this problem? Well, all we're looking for is a relationship between the acceleration of one block and the acceleration of the other. In this case, both blocks will always cover the exact same distance in the exact same amount of time. And so what we have is the acceleration of A is equal to the acceleration of B and therefore, we can just call it A, generically, just the A with no subscript, okay? Because I know that the acceleration of each will be identical in both magnitude and direction. And by the way, the acceleration constraint uh, rigorously would be determined by using kinematics. But again, that's something we're really not going to address too much, maybe in a later example when I give you a difficult one. Uh, but for right now, you know, you should be able to reason out what the acceleration is supposed to be. All right, so let's finish up this problem now. So we can simplify things because what we have is we can factor out the acceleration. So we get MA plus MB times A. And so we have F over MA plus MB is equal to the acceleration. And this is the answer that we're looking for. Now, you should always conduct a reasonableness test whenever you get to your final answer. Does this answer make sense? Okay. Now, if you think about what's happening, we've got one single solitary force 
causing an acceleration of two separate masses, but these two masses behave as one, effectively. And so if I wanted to find the acceleration for just a single object, I would use Newton's second law and it would be F over M. Now, in our case, we have the acceleration is going to be equal to F net of the system divided by the mass of the system. And so this does make sense because we have this one single solitary force causing two total masses behaving as one large mass, which we can write as M system. And therefore, it makes sense. But you can't make the mistake of thinking that all the problems are going to end up identical to this, where it's F over M1 plus M2. It, it just doesn't happen that way. Okay, so um, you're always going to have this general form here, where it's a total force or a net force divided by the mass of the system, but you're going to end up with other constants in there because what if we have this situation where the acceleration of one is equal to three times the acceleration of two? That's going to factor into it, and so it's not always going to be that, that clear-cut F over M. There will be other constants in there from time to time.